Ladies and gentlemen, friends and fellow travelers, as Julia said, it's incredibly exciting that we have this ninth marathon to the topic of extinction, and it's a topic which Gustav Metzger always said is very, very urgent. And that's really something where we always start when we conceive a marathon. What does the world need and what is urgent? And extinction is maybe the most immediate issue yet, and perhaps one of the biggest problems that we face in the 21st century. Increasingly, it appears the world feels the pressuring onset of extinction. Its specter is becoming ever more present throughout our everyday networks of communication. Our subject, therefore, calls not only for a reflexive overview, but it is also, as Gustav always insisted, a call for action. One which, as Gustav said, he has been developing for many, many decades. In his own words, and this is a quote from Gustav from a recent conversation, which we will screen in a few minutes. We need to take a stand against the ongoing erasure of species, even where there is little chance of ultimate success. It is our privilege and our duty to be at the forefront of the struggle. While humanity has moved through extreme crises in the past, time and speed is of the essence. This year's marathon takes Metzger's urgent words in order to explore the many facets that make up the constellation that is extinction. We start by addressing the ongoing environmental degradation that threatens our ecology and our world through the loss of valuable animal and plant species, while the controversial potential for de-extinction will also be discussed. The homogenization of identity will be explored, threats to our languages and literature will also be discussed as the written and printed world is overtaken by technological devices. We will also consider the natural world as it is articulated through these digital mediums. We are very excited to host a dedicated session and section on the extinction of voice through performance, choreography, labor, and the body. As Julia said, this is actually a very sustained effort, so we do not see this as just a two-day event. We see the Extinction Marathon as a movement that will continue to evolve bring awareness and create a legacy that extends across and beyond the physical encounter of our meeting here in the magazine and also on our digital platform, Extinctly. I'd also like to mention edge.org and Sean Brockman, who is here. You will also see um, part of the event on Edge. And obviously, the dialogue with Sean Brockman is a very important part to connect the marathon to science. The marathon. Uh, and Extinctly, and all these other outlets um, are really the idea of creating uh, a long duration platform which can produce reality. And Julia mentioned DLD, our partners. We developed an earlier phase of this extinction topic together with Tino Segal, Olaf Eliasson, um, Pika, and Ottesen, the solar technologist and CEO brand in Munich, trying to actually develop. Uh, a solar airplane, and it is this idea that for these big questions of the 21st century, we need to bring all the disciplines together to really go beyond the fear of pooling knowledge, which is what the marathon tries to do. Gustav's exhibition at the Serpentine Gallery in 2009 um, was actually a very important uh, step, so as to say, towards the Extinction Marathon, because we showed the work mass media today and yesterday, where you had thousands of newspapers stacked for the duration of the exhibition, the visitors were invited to clip articles from these papers related to different topics of which extinction uh, was one and to pin them on the gallery walls. Addressing the continuous consumption of goods and information that characterizes our current condition, Metzger stated, and here another quote from him, I want this work to be useful, to emphasize the dangerous environment in which we live, events of life and death that can lead to extinction. It was this term that became a recurrent topic for this discussion. Gustav told us that it's just not enough to talk about climate change. We will never wake up. We have to talk about extinction. And in a way, that also had to do and came up in our conversation with the philosopher Timothy Martin, who associates the term species and extinction with what he calls hyperobjects. We are aware of their presence, but we cannot see them. We, not, we cannot touch them, and so often we simply ignore them. In order to turn this ignorance into what Martin describes as an ecological awareness, we need to realize that there is no single meta-language 
Rather, this is a myth that is propagated by the rapid state of globalization that we now find ourselves in. We may not be in the first phase of globalization, but we are living in the most extreme phase of globalization, and the resultant homogenization ine inevitably leads to the disappearance of species, languages, and even entire cultures. We are not talking about a single species or a single extinction, but these terms become pluralized. And that leads us to an earlier marathon beginning, because this year actually the marathon already be began before the marathon. It began with the park night of Sigmund Baumann a couple of weeks ago in Smiljan Radic's pavilion, where actually Baumann stated that for him, modern life that we experience daily looks very much like a constant dress rehearsal of extinction. According to Baumann, we are in a constant state of flux, a liquid state that refuses to stabilize, and in the same vein, really, as Metzger's newspaper stocks, Baumann addresses the relentless processes of waste removal and disposability that characterize our current condition. In our consumerist society, we become tied into an endless chain of extinctions and creations, one that is neither sustainable nor embodying of the shared future that both Baumann and Gustav Metzger are advocating. Human beings have now become an influencing and potentially self-destructive ecological force, a force that defines our movement into the Anthropocene that Paul Crutzen famously coined in 2000. Then surely we can harness this collective force in order to shape our future. As Martin Rees comments, each person in the world is more demanding of resources and of energy and impacting more on the biosphere. So this is the first century in the history of the world where one species, the human species, can determine the future of the planet. In as much as extinction may be a dark topic to consider, we would like to take a simultaneously optimistic perspective. One of our speakers here today, the incredible artist and poet Ethel Adnan, has embraced this sense of a shared optimism through a poster that she has designed for the marathon. Her message is simple. Animals have a rendezvous with intelligence because they are the survival level. They are showing the way. With this in mind, the marathon will explore the potential pathways for what lies ahead, captures under its subheading, visions of the future. We do hope to set a series of questions and agendas for the future. And it was actually Bertrand Russell who commented how communications have hitherto been the chief factor in limiting our ability to forge a collective voice but the platforms available to us today will hopefully allow us to extend the conversation into a global dialogue. Thank you so much.